I'd like to talk today about competitive markets. And if we read the beginning of the chapter, the overview, they talk a couple of questions here they've got. How are prices determined in competitive markets? Okay. How does competition affect the profits of a firm or industry? Interesting questions. Let's look <clears throat> briefly at the market characteristics of perfect competition. Number one, many firms. So you're not just buying from one firm. You've got lots of options. Number two, perfect information. So not only do you have lots of options, but you know about those options. You know all the subtleties of each and every choice that you're going to be making. Number three, identical products. So everybody's selling the same thing. You know, water is one example of an identical product. Marginal cost equals price. That you need to read your textbook to really fully understand how the marginal cost, if you look at some of the charts in here, at the point of equilibrium, the marginal cost equals the price. So at that point, they're not making anything. On the last unit that they sell, it's the equivalent of, of, of not making anything low barriers to entry. So anybody can do it. You can get in pretty easily. Most of us probably could sell water fairly easily. But I like to think about this in the real world, in places that I go and in uh, cities that I visit, and I look at things around there and I say, hmm, what's the economics of that situation? And I like to look at, at some of the markets that are competitive and some of the markets that aren't competitive. So let's see. This is it right here, this little shop. We're going to buy some postcards here. Why? Because they're the cheapest postcards we have seen in this whole trip. Now, many of these smaller, <clears throat> not so big touristy places like in Alsace or the Spessart region of Germany, there were 30 cents postcards. In the big places that were really popular, like uh, Neuschwanstein and, and um, Peschera del Garda, those were 60 cents, so you knew you were in a high rent district. When you go up the lake from Pachera del Garda, you found the 30 cent ones. Then we got here to Venice, began with 60 cent ones by the train station. But when I looked further into the island, I found 30 cent ones. Then I found 25 cent ones. Then I found 20 cent ones. And then we got back to St. Marco's Square where there are more 30 and 60 cent ones. And finally, we found them for 19 cents. So this guy is getting our business. Okay. okay. Here we are in Venice, Italy, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in talking about perfect competition because we always think of perfect competition as being unlimited number of buyers, unlimited number of sellers that would allow uh, individual transactions to take place and, and no one affects the market. And a perfect example could be gondola drivers here in the, in the canals of Venice. There are hundreds of, canal, uh, of gondola drivers and thousands of tourists, and they all want to take a ride in the gondola. So, in theory, we should be able to find the best price. And in postcards, we did. We, we went from 60 euros to 30 euros to, to 20, uh, 20 cents, that is, and 19 cents we actually found. So you can get some, something in postcards, but in gondola rides, no. Regulated monopoly is really what you have here. These guys need to be licensed gondola drivers, and they charge 80 euros for a standard fare, about a half an hour ride through the canals of Venice. So there is no negotiation saying, hey, I'll take a 15 minute ride for 40 euros, or, or a 10 minute ride, or how about five euros for a photo op of me and the wife, and then we're all done. Couldn't get that, but uh, they have a standard fare, which means that everybody is charging the same amount, so there's no competition. Every driver is as good as the next, which of course is not the free market. 